inflation now versus the expectation of higher inflation. You've always said, look at the data, look at the clear and present now. Are we, too, are we out too far in our expectations of where inflation will be? Well, uh, again, uh, we have a measure of inflation expectations in five years' time or five years, five years forward, as you know, so a lot of indicators that are more or less demonstrating that the efforts made <coughs> by, I would say, all central banks, and particularly on both sides of the Atlantic, uh, is progressively restoring uh, the kind of expectations that are uh, necessary. The problem of Europe is uh, of a very peculiar nature because the ECB is responsible for the euro and inflation at the level of all countries, all the, I would say, the 340 million people. But that doesn't mean that all countries could, should behave exactly in the same fashion. For instance, it's clear that the countries that are overcompetitive, that have a fantastic current account surplus, should have unit labor cost and inflation, national inflation, higher than the average, when the other that have to catch up with their lost competitiveness have to get an right. high, uh, unit labor cost and inflation lower than the average. And so the recommendation which should be given by the Commission to all countries are not the same. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, not uh, at all uh, you know, appropriate to have the same recommendation for all. But for the central bank, of course, what is extremely important is to solidly anchor inflation expectations in line with the definition. And I have to say that it seems to me that in the medium term, the job which has been done is a good one. Mr. Trichet, we mentioned earlier the word brutal. Another Trichet phrase is diffuse, the idea of spreading out or diffusing the benefits of productivity. Let me bring that over to the great dilemma of quantitative easing, moving to normal or even to a restrictive central bank policy. How do we diffuse quantitative easing and how do we diffuse the pain of that over time? What should Mr. Draghi, Mr. Powell, Mr. Kuroda do to diffuse and diffuse quantitative easing? Well, uh, first of all, it seems to me that a good uh, way of looking at it is to consider that uh, the cycle in the U.S. is in advance of the cycle in Europe for a very simple reason, because we had a sovereign risk crisis that the U.S. Had not. So we were hit by the financial crisis starting in the U.S., and then we were hit by, by our own specific sovereign risk crisis. So we, we are late by 2.5, 3 years, something like that on the U.S. When you look at the U.S., you see the sequence tapering, an, an ounce of the tapering, <laughs> then the tapering, then the stabilization of the uh, net purchases of uh, securities, then the start of the diminishing uh, of the overall portfolio. It is where the U.S. Fed stands, and it seems to me that it is exactly the diffusion that you were mentioning, the progressive uh, diminishing, progressive going back to normal, more or less rapidly, depending on the uh, data, on the, uh, I would say, real economy, and on the uh, inflation that you are observing. It would be, in my opinion, the same in uh, Europe. Uh, we are you know, uh, already in the phase of the implementation of tapering, because we went from 60 to 30, and then we will see exactly what happens. Uh, I don't, don't want to preclude in any respect what the governing council will decide, but it seems to me, again, if you look at the U.S., you have a, an idea of what could happen in Europe. In any case, it seems to me that all central banks, making the working assumption that the real economy in the advanced economy countries should be back to normal itself, then the monetary policy should also be progressively back to normal after a period which was absolutely extraordinarily dramatic on both sides of the Atlantic. And of course, as we all know, uh, before in Japan and still in Japan. What do you see, Mr. Trichet, as the biggest risk to the European economy at the moment? Is it euro level? Or is it, for example, the Italian elections that could potentially, depending on the government that's formed, actually veer Europe off track? 
first of all, as regards the, Europe, the Italian election, it seems to me that we knew in advance that we would not have a case for Italexit a referendum with the euro participation at stake or the, even the EU participation at stake. In advance, the Five Stars movement had said that uh, they would not like that at all. And uh, that, that is something which uh, uh, eliminated, in my opinion, the, the, the dramatic systemic risk. Now, now, we have, of course, a lot of uh, uh, difficulty for, uh, for the government to be set up, and uh, we will see what happens. Uh, but that should not hamper, again, Europe as a whole. And I hope very much that the new government in, in Italy will proceed and uh, embark on the structural reforms that are absolutely necessary for growth to pick up and uh, uh, productivity progress to pick up. Now, as regards the real economy in Europe, as you know, the start of this year was quite good. The, uh, the PMI that we have are signaling a first quarter that could be quite exceptional. Perhaps that, I mean, they even say, some are saying, it could be up to 0.7 or 0.8 percent uh, on a quarter to on quarter basis, which would in the U.S., translated in the U.S., annualizing would, would mean something like 3 percent annualized. So I don't want to uh, suggest that it, it is for sure, but uh, clearly the dynamism mm -hmm. of the euro, euro area economy is quite impressive at the present moment. 